Warning, this video may contain some material that many parents may find unsuitable for children under the age of 14. We use Dremel tools, sharp objects, swear a lot, well, sometimes, and overall, anybody under the age of 14 shouldn't be watching this unless you have a parent with you. And if you do watch, I hope you enjoy it. Ho, ho, holy crap, it's Christmas. This is Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop. This week I'm tackling a Morris wagon. As always, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. So I got this, uh, I believe, from William Robinson in a pack of cars he had sent me. And i um, not a big fan of the casting, so I figured it's not going to hurt my feelings to hack it up. And uh, this is a, a special... Christmas episode, obviously, put on by Diecast Graveyard, and there'll be links to all the channels that are participating down below in the description. So I start by taking it apart. Uh, it's not that easy to put back and forth together. There's like one way it comes apart, um, just because of the way the front sits in, and there's only one post, and it goes into the plastic back piece. So I also got a trailer uh, from William Robinson. Um, I'm only using part of it. It's It's got two tiers to it, and... Uh, I decided just to use one, but I really don't show anything with that until the very end. But uh, just remember that it's part of the build. It's just not very intricate, so I didn't put a lot of effort into it, but it is part of it. So I kind of hemmed and hawed about what I was going to do, and I decided I was going to cut off the and make a convertible out of it. And then I was going to cut the back as well off the woody aspect of it. So I carefully and very carefully <laughs> cut um, a, a section right down the middle. Uh, I left just enough to make it look like a convertible windshield post. Um, however, as I was cutting and doing all kinds of stuff, I ended up breaking it and cracking it. Um, so I just took the whole thing off. So I just found it easier to, to grind down with the grinding wheel. Uh, to make it as clear and cut as possible, just to have a little bit of a post sticking up there, uh, which is it's fine because I'm going to end up cutting the plastic glass as well. So actually, I think in the end, even though I kind of messed it up, it looked looks better. I like it that way instead of having this big bulky piece of metal sticking up as a windshield frame because it was kind of thick. You don't see most of this casting because of the way that the the back fits on it. However, I do try to get everything taken care of and all the sanding marks, which I'll show you later. Uh, I'm not sure what these two little tabs in the back are for, but I cut them off completely. They seemed kind of pointless, and I didn't want to get rid of everything that was pointless onto this vehicle. Once I trim, um, cut it, I'll go through with my file, clean everything up just to get more of a visual. This whole The whole thing with me and uh, one thing I want to point out is I show everything in order. So if it looks like I'm bouncing around, I probably am. But I don't cut and show you like all the body work, all the... I show it as I do it. Uh, whatever comes up next on the camera is how I put it in the timeline as I'm editing my videos. So I want to get rid of the... I don't like... I wanted it more of a truck, a roadster pickup style. So 
I cut the top and instead of making a tonal cover, I'm going to end up trimming the actual top itself. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a second to make use the top as the bed cover. And it actually worked out pretty good. I mean, it's got a little bit of a curvature to it. That's hard to get. You can't get rid of it. That's just what it is. Uh, but it, it looks pretty good. So I go to my, my box of wheels and try to find what I think will look good. I end up using two different styles. For the back, I'm using more of a off-road knobby style. And the front, kind of an old school style. The piece of styrene I'm using right now is quarter inch styrene. And I'm just going to trim that down and make almost like a little bit of a base just to have to sit the tonal cover back on. It just looks better that way. And it gives me something to glue to when I go to assemble. Uh, I'm trying to think, you know, down the road because I don't. I kind of wing things as I go. I find it easier just to do a lot of fitment as I'm customizing. Because if you wait till the end and you realize something doesn't, and I've had it happen, and I still have it happen, even though I try, I actually had it happen on this one with the uh, trailer hitch. So always try to fit as much as you can. So I'm gonna the bit, all the individual pieces. I'm gonna prime the base. I'm gonna paint black and. I'm going to matte clear all the chrome. And what that does, instead of stripping it, it just gives me something to, something for the paint to grip to. And it, at the same time, it dulls down the bright, bright, shiny chrome. And it just kind of makes it more realistic, I guess. A lot of uh, mod, modelers will, will do that as well. So I prime everything up. And I'm going to use, I've used this lime green testers paint. It's got a heavy metallic to it. To the point where you're spraying it and it just you can see the metal flake flying so i'm using that for part of the build so the casting was pretty decent there's some molding lines casting lines on the rear wheel wells and on the front fenders on the tops so i'm going to take my file sanding stick sandpaper everything i can possibly find i use to to get out casting lines and imperfections so I'll start with the file that knocks it down. You can kind of see a sanding stick off to the side. Actually, I think I'm using it. Yeah, I'm using it now just to kind of smooth it out. Then I'll hit it with some sandpaper. Then I take some polishing compound once I've got the body to where I think it's going to look pretty decent. And I'm going to use a wire brush with the polishing compound to get in and really just clean it up and make sure you... <laughs> uh, don't do it over a rag because it'll get hung up just like it did there. Dumbass. So the polishing compound works good. And then I've got this chrome polish that I'm using with a different wheel, just a regular soft wheel. That This stuff really, I used it in my truck video that I just did. And this stuff works awesome. I love it. It really, really gets in there. I did it maybe three times. And then when I'm finally done, I take, I move the rag out of the way this time. I'm getting smarter. I think even softer uh, wheel and just, just hit it real quick just to get any, any leftover imperfections out and residue that I'll wipe it all down. I'll wash it with soap and water and then I degrease it and it's ready for paint at that point. So it's a, it's a multi-step process, but it really doesn't take that long. It depends on how bad the body is. So I'm going to use my bright vision red nitro flame paint and real light coats at first and if you really want some good video on tutorials on painting especially spectra flame style paint uh, visit paul at diecast graveyard he's got some amazing tutorials and he talks you through it in an easy to understand way and that's pretty much what i used because this is one of the very few times i've actually used a spectra flame paint so he walks you through the whole process so make sure you check that out so I'll put a few light coats and I slowly get heavier and heavier. And then my final coat will be like a heavy, semi-heavy wet coat. Uh, I was trying to get a certain shade of red. So that's why you can kind of pick the shade by how many coats you put on. So then the rest is just touch up. It's details, chrome pen. I do the parachutes. I did it like a bright red and then I use a bright white for the straps and it makes it almost look like little christmas presents for the back even though they're parachutes i know what they are but <laughs> um i think it looked pretty good the detail 
there's not a lot on this. The in, the engine's pretty cool, so I do the the belt. I'll do the valve covers and the the bug catcher. I'll do the butterflies inside. And I used red. I, I try to, when I can, I'm not the most color-coordinated person in the world. Uh, that's why I wear jeans most of the time, because everything goes with jeans. The I try to color-coordinate what I can. So I'm doing the valve covers. They're finned, what I'm assuming to be, like, finned aluminum valve covers. So I'm doing the fins, inside the fins red, and then I'm just using a paper towel to wipe off the surface part, which you can get away with because I did clear coat it. The seats, I'm going to do uh, aluminum color. And for those of you who follow me, it, the color is Lead Belcher. I haven't said that in a while, so I'm saying it's Lead from Citadel. I use it on a lot of uh, a lot of my projects, and I like it. It's just it's the right aluminum color for me for what I for what I do. So I do the seats, and that's pretty much as far as detail goes. There's not a lot. I did the dash red because that's all part of you know, the interior and everything's part of the same casting. And then I'll do the not very defined, but I did the carburetors, or what I think to be the carburetors, the way it's casted. And uh, then it's time for clear. Once I clear it, this is a professional uh, 2K clear. This is all the pieces, parts I have. You can see I cut the windshield and had got ready for final assembly at this point, which I've already assembled it 100 times. Shout out to all my Patreon members, those with the YouTube links or icons next to their name or linked down below. I appreciate everybody who, who contributes to help feed my addiction and keep me going, and it's great. And it's a great place for me to share uh, inside info and, and sneak peeks on projects like this one. And here's what I ended up with. The trailer hitch is removable. It's held in with the screw that holds the back end, so it can be taken off. And this is this was a fun project. I, I'm glad Paul put it. I'm not a big Christmas person. I'm more of a Scrooge. So this this was kind of a little outside my comfort zone, to be honest with you. And that's what I ended up with. You can see I get different wheels in the front. And it's designed to bring little die-cast treasures to all the good boy and girl customizers out there in the land. Once again, guys, have a Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.